Are we here? Are we on episode 17 of Review? Hello, I'm Zeos Pantera. Welcome to my desk where there's many gold planars, many, many, many gold planars and straps. And we're going to do Review. Now this is the 17th episode in a series where I literally go back in time and look at all my old videos from oldest to newest and tell you in a review style if it's worth considering them, buying them, or what the alternatives are. So this is fun. So let's move up. Um, we ended on the first DAC, DAP movie, and we are now continuing with the Biobidet BB2000. Now, um, my channel's name is Z Reviews, not Z Audio Reviews or Z Sound Guy or anything to do with audio. I review things, and I just happen to find my audience a lot of times with headphones and speakers and things like that. So when it comes to reviewing things that are not audio, I tend to be very, very picky. And I only like to do things that change my life. And the Biobidet BB2000, which is the uh, flagship ass-wiping tech, um, I'm currently the owner of three of them. There's one in my bed bathroom there, there's one in the guest bathroom, and there's one in the closet over there because it doesn't fit in the, the other room because it's round versus oval toilet. Yeah, no, go watch that. Uh, if quarantine and the toilet paper shortage hasn't fucking taught you a lesson, America, it's hygiene and how bidets should improve your life. Like, once you have one, a heated seat, warm water, splashing, cleaning, drying, air freshening, you'll realize that um, before that, you are living, America is the trailer park of the world because we don't have bidets. I don't care how fucking advanced our medical science is, or, or we went to the moon, we're first to the moon, I don't give a shit, bidet. Until you have a bidet, you're, you're nothingness. Moving on. Um, JVC SV1000s, crazy EQ substance power. This might have been the first pair I got. I think I got two of these. This first one, and this, this was a weird headphone because it had an actual big, like, 70 millimeter driver, a dedicated 50 millimeter driver, and then there was a smaller driver in front of it. So, unique design. And everyone's like, this is the craziest bass headphone, Zeos, but you gotta do all this shit. And I didn't do all that shit, and it was just a terrible headphone. Like, terrible headphone. Well, we'll get to the new one. We're into putting an EQ on it and forcing the bass up and then forcing more power into it. And then it finally activated. And I was like, wow, these have so much bass. Still a terrible headphone. Never sounded not terrible. So whatever, moving on. Rokat Cross. This was the first time a company had sent me like a gaming peripheral setup. They sent me a mouse pad. It's not this one. This isn't the Rokat pad, is it? No. They sent me a Rokat mouse pad, a Rokat mouse, a Rokat keyboard, and Rokat headphones. And I did the keyboard and mouse thing somewhere. And I had to do these headphones, and they were... What's the word? Hot garbage. They were hot fucking garbage. How's my angle, by the way? I try to guess every time, and I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, no. Don't, don't buy... If a, um, <laughs> There's very few examples. Cooler Master MH751 is literally a Taxstar Pro 82 with slightly different fucking build and slightly better, actually. It's great. So I can't just say if a, if a company makes a keyboard, don't buy the headphone, because that doesn't always apply. But usually if it's a gaming peripheral, you could steer clear of it or ask someone in the know, AKA me. Moving on from that, um, the Phoenix Aria. I don't remember this headphone. This headphone gaming headset got wood. Was that a cheap one? Was that like super duper cheap? Look at the size of it, it's so massive. But you know what? I don't remember it. So if I don't remember it, why the hell should I even remember it here and just, just move past? It has no lasting thing in my head that I, I don't remember what it sounded like. So it would be a lie if I started talking about it. Thing I do remember what it sounds like is anything Audio-Technica from that series. The, AT, the A1000, 2000 Zs, and all my Audio-Technica of uh, ATH, 2000X, things like that. So, bass light. The difference between this headphone and this headphone. I remember this headphone. Bass light, crazy nice imaging. A little bit like light on all the tonality. It wasn't like a heavy duty headphone. A lot of times you think closed headphone, you think bassy, you think like aggressive. This was just sort of like, ooh, fluey, fluey, fluey. I didn't actually take a note of the time. All right, let's assume we're gonna stop. Ah, when it hits the eight. Um, attached cables and the weird flapper headbands, which a lot of people don't like. I didn't mind them, 
but they also don't adjust this way. Like you open them and it spreads, but they don't like tilt. So you have to like manipulate the, the titanium and it was, uh. anyway, I love the red. I, there's another one of those headphones where it's like, oh, it's red, the color. Like, oh, what do you have? Silver, more silver on silver? No, 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 red. So just for that, it wins fucking like three points. I, I'm so tired of boring headphones. And then there's wood, which is also getting boring to me now. Let's get some colors in here. The Aoun X7S, the class A hero we need. My first class A headphone amp. Um, didn't have balanced inputs, but has a true balanced output. A little noisy. I still have it to this day. It's in the basement. Um, because I, I have, I just love the, I love the damn thing so much. But once I got better and better amplifiers, I sort of like pushed it to the side. I should probably take it out again to just like, to love it some more. <sighs> Fuck. All right. Hold on a second. Uh, I had to get a drink. I was dying. All right. Um, own X7S, Class A, sort of outdated now. You can get other Class A amplifiers that are probably, you know what? Is it still the cheapest? Like, Rebel Amp, and then Singzer, and then what else you need? That's it. So on the list, and oh, by the way, the way this works, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way now, the description of this video has everything I'm talking about. But there's no link next to it unless it actually still is relevant you maybe should buy it however unlike this i'll link the relevant things that are newer better maybe not affordable but what you should probably buy instead of trying to buy a class a own and i love own i really do <sighs> moving on the bear dynamic dt 1990 not the 990 1990 these these are one of the headphones that I wish I had. They were loaned to me by someone and they had to take them back and I spent a good deal of time with them. And it's just like, holy fuck. Why don't I own these? And every time I look at them, they're like five, $600. Like these will be linked in the description, 100%. Because people think when I do a review, like a week later, like the review is a week old, do I still like that headphone? This review is four years old. I would 100% recommend the DT1990s. They are the OpenMax Studio Monitor, studio, like monitor to, li to listen to accuracy on things. For close back, I have the Neumanns here, the Neumann NDH20s, but I didn't find these for like another two years after those. So those were like my golden goose that I wanted. I knew what I wanted out of a, a good, clean, professional studio monitoring headphone because I heard those first. So do they work? Fuck yes, they do. In fact, I, I listened to them again doing the uh, Dakoni sponsored video where I went through all their pads on all the, the Bear Dynamics stuff. So um, I actually did find a better set of pads than I think. Mm. Hashtag noisy bottle. Monoprice Monolith M560. What was the title? Giant Killers. So Planar. $250, I think. One of the most unique built headphones I've ever, ever reviewed. They had uh, open back, but you can put these wooden panels on with magnets to make them close back. Fuck it, they don't sound good close back. Take those panels and throw them away. They had that wire that is just a three and a half millimeter to plug into the amp and then two, three and a half millimeters to plug into the headphones. But they were just, it was just a splitter. And then the headphones internally were wired so that no matter which way you plug the wire in, it still got the left channel on the left and the right channel on the right. And that meant you can't swap wires, which means you couldn't run balance. And most of the amplifiers four years ago weren't powerful enough to push those things. Um, they were also super lightweight clamp. They just like had no clamp. So I had to take this and you had to bend it like over and in. I still have those, they're on my wall. And I put the Sony pads on them. They had really shit pads and they were supposed to have like, there were magnetic pads that came off and you could throw them away and get better pads. But I don't understand a company like Monoprice who makes a system, spends the time to engineer a magnetic pad system and then doesn't launch a headphone with three or four different pad options. They would have sold fucking gangbusters. Why make the pads removable at all if you don't even offer replacement original pads? It, it didn't make any fucking sense. It fucking sense. Zero makes sense, no sense. Please, please give me motherfucking pads. Anyway, it's got Sony pads, double stick taped to it. The, I think the, the 700s, really thick ones. It was one of the rare occasions where those thick Sony pads actually sounded good. 
And I took those to uh, MAGFest down in DC. Like the first year I went to MAGFest. Those were, those were the headphones I wanted to show off to people. So those absolutely, I've, I will link them. It's just that there there's much easier ways to get nice planners now. You like get 5XX and things like that. But oh my God, I launched the cooking consortium. For those of you who don't know, I um I currently run three channels on YouTube. This channel, which is quoted quote the big channel. There's the unboxing channel, which is actually my original oldest channel, which was just I started my reviews there. I started my cooking videos there. I did my I did my gaming videos there. It was my YouTube channel. And eventually the reviews became big enough to move their own channel. And four years ago, I thought the cooking videos were big enough to move their own channel. We just are like at the precipice of 10,000 people, I think. 10,000 people are subscribed to that channel. It took four years to get 10,000 people to follow. Because we don't really have a structure or we're not kind and we really don't do recipes. So it's just like, if you wanted something, if you want a new experience, check out the Z Cooks. Because I mean, I'm still trying to push content out every two weeks, whether it's old recordings of my cousin or sister or me or Princess Pasta or guest cooks. But it's, you know, basically start the camera, only shut it off if you have to do nothing to do for 20 minutes and then turn it back on. So if you wanna watch 40 minute long videos of cooking, that's where you go. Um, oh, I got a can gem in New York City 2017. Oh, I listened to the Orpheus in this one. So this is when we used to be able to go places and you see kids. And I went to can gem and that girl was hot. She worked at Audio Quest. And um, I got to listen to the Orpheus. And Orpheus to this moment, Still sound, sounds pretty much in my head like the best fucking headphone. Um, that motherfucker there, the very, very uh, aptly named GL1200s, I think maybe is a thing that comes closest to the way the Orpheus sounded, where it was like this like strange, aggressive amount of fucking sound. But uh, yeah, if you want to watch me, I used to go places, and I never had a, a dedicated title, so you can't find all the times I did things. Wow, what a weird time it was four years ago. So I launched the cooking consortium, I go to Can Jam, and then boom, fancy butter Valentine's Day special featuring M and J Cooks. So apparently, if you haven't, if you just started following this channel and you're somehow watching this video this far into it, um, I reviewed butter. Remember when I was talking about bidets and how only the most important things in my life, things that have affected me, get a review on my review channel? Um, well, fucking butter is great, I don't give a shit. We did 12 types of butter. Cause back when I was living in, actually this is not living in New York, but I visit my family. They had, um, not Wegmans, Fairway. Bunch of nice markets out there. Mm. So we all gathered up our butters. We had six sweet and six salted. And to this moment, there is a butter that we find, I won't spoil it for you in case you want to watch the whole special, because um, it is 32 minutes of me and my cousin and my sister eating butter. Um, to this moment, there's a butter that we found that's, well, I don't want to say it's French, but it's a French butter that, if I could link it in the description, I will, but I don't think I can. Um, Fan-fucking-tastic. Coarse salt, French cream, oh God. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's like you just have to eat the butter. Nothing is good enough to put on the butter. Nothing is good enough to put butter on. Oh, you have this nice bread? Don't waste that, that butter on the bread. Throw that bread away, just eat the butter. Um, the Wharfdale Diamond 10.1s. So. <sighs> I don't remember what these sounded like. I don't remember if I liked them. I don't remember if I hated them. I don't remember anything. I know Wharfdale, like there's a couple brands that people have been begging me. See us, you ever gonna do a Send Acoustics? See us, you ever gonna do a, a, you know, fuck it. I don't remember, why is there dirt here? My obsessive picking always starts when I put the camera on. It's like, get this shit off my mouse pad. They were okay. I'm just gonna say, I think they were okay. I have no recollection. Isn't that, isn't that the line when you're like being interrogated by a lawyer? I have no recollection of that. I have no recollection. Snake oil in you, I have a lot of recollection. Was this the one where I had the snake oil bottle, which I still have, it's in my liquor cabinet. Don't drink that, by the way. Um, this was just me going off and like, this was me attempting to just start recognizing, hey, snake oil exists and it sucks. 125,000 views, not bad, but considering the Wharfdale's got 151,000 views, I guess I should be more concerned with Wharfdale speakers than I am with snake oil. But yeah, snake oil exists, MQA is snake oil. I love to say that at the beginning of every video. We're just gonna keep pushing that out because companies need to stop putting it in things. 
and charging us for it. Like when Topping puts out two DACs and one has MQA and one doesn't, they charge more for the MQA DAC, just get the regular DAC. You don't need MQA. MQA is broken. It's a, it's a, it's a scam. We'll, we'll go golden one and I will go over it. Um, so yeah, so like MQA bad, no MQA good. But when something only comes out and it only has MQA, you're paying for a license. That made that product $50 more than it needed to be. So, you know, we should answer that to stop. Phase linear series 400 amplifier. That's vintage baby is my title. Um, eBay purchase. Wanted a, a vintage amplifier to test speakers. Have it, have it in the basement. Don't hook it up much. Works perfectly. 200 watts a channel. Uh, it's really odd. There's this massive power supply and then these big fins and it's only about that thick, the actual case and the rest of its fins and power supply. And the reason I don't use it much is because I was given a warning when I purchased this vintage amplifier. It's like they didn't have protection circuits back then. And if you use this like constantly and anything goes wrong with the circuitry with something, something's just off, it doesn't feel right. If it does fail, it's not just going to fail and go blink, warning light. It's going to go blink, fire coming out of all your speakers because it will damage your speakers. It'll basically shove 110 right through your speakers. Bad. It'll do bad. Works perfectly though. I, I, tr I trust my unit. I just don't want to like take the risk of running it a thousand hours a year. Well, I'll run it 50 hours a year. And because you can install a protection circuit in it, like you have to open it up and solder things in place to, to make it cut out or put a, a fuse in line. I just, I don't know, it works, so I'm not doing that yet. There are, there are places that will repair amplifiers at all and, and do anything you want. Also, this makes me yawn. Monoprice Monolith K Bass. These were actually up on my wall for quite a while. Um, I had the wall in my apartment that had all the speakers up there. And those things were unique enough to keep for a good year. Top five and a quarter, middle tweeter, bottom port. And the port was like a fucking, just a square, like a cube. Like, I don't understand. Like it should, could have been round. It could have been a slot. No, it was, a, it was like a fucking, I don't know. It was specifically done to hold a remote control or something. And they sat on your desk, which is where you'd obviously put them. And they were the most aggressive low endy fucking things out of a five and a quarter. Cause the box was massive and it was all folding horn design and shit. And that port would hit you in the face with air. And it was an experience to use them. And I eventually sold them because it was just like, all right, I need more room on my shelf. I wasn't taking them down because they weren't like high fidelity. They were like the tweeter was a little bit too bright and the, like the, the driver was cheap. And I think it's, it's party piece was that, oh my God, how much low end can you get out of a five and a quarter? But it was never like a complete speaker where I fucking adored it. These MTMs, I fucking adore them. They have no low end and they distort, but I could live with that and get everything else where that was just, just the low end, just low end. I love the weirdness of them though. They're built off a really interesting design. Um, Cambridge Audio. It's another one of those brands. It's like, have you ever done the Cambridge Audio? Only a handful of these have come by my desk. And I remember these being the softest fucking speakers I listened to. I call them soothing. And I remember calling them in the review. These are perfect spa speakers. Speakers that were unoffensive. These are the um, Ibasso SR twos. Well, one of the twos that I just reviewed correctly. Um, where it's just like, okay, big, big soft dome. Everything was soft. Everything was soft. It was quality though. That's the thing. Like you think of, oh, the speaker sounds soft or dull. And it's like, oh, that means it's bad. No, a speaker can be just liquid butter. Just remove. Yeah. It's removing things, but who cares? You don't want those things anyway. Not if you're in the, if you're in a Cambridge audio SX 50 state of mind and you just need to be like in front of things. I'm imagining if I had to work a full fucking desk job where I had to sit in front of speakers, like I just, I would not want these MTMs. They're very clear, they're, but they're just gonna, they're just gonna run on you and run on you and here's everything. And those were just sort of like, you know what? Let's just calm down. Fucking have a little break, a little break. See over here. They were good that way. They were real good that way. Um, PS Audio Sprout. 
Not the new one, not the Sprout 100. It's the original one that did have a base boost that you couldn't turn off. And I still liked it. Like there was nothing wrong. It was expensive, but of all the DAC amp headphone combos, the PS Audio Sprout and the PS Audio Sprout 100, which is a new one, are probably your best bet. Like I got the Motu M2 here for like 200 bucks. And honestly, of, of all the DAC amp combos, and here's the thing, that did a speaker outputs too. So that was a speaker amp and a headphone amp and a DAC, all in one desk solution. It still wins. But the Motu M2 is an old desk solution if you have powered monitors, but it doesn't power speakers. So you have to get that and another amplifier. That was all of it. And PS Audio, that was their cheapest product. It was 600 bucks, I think, roughly. Um, sound demo, sound demo, sound demo. We're well past the eights, but I got a drink of water, so we'll see. Um, building Z wires. So if you don't know, I actually did use to sell, build and sell um, speaker wires because money is important because you want to have a mortgage one day. And so you need to, to make money any way possible. So I started building speaker wires. And the problem was I was charging $200 a set. And that is wholly not enough money for the amount of hours it took. The, the amount of twisting and I, my fingers, I think I still feel the damage in my fingertips every time I got stabbed with a piece of fucking copper. And then the heat gun and the fucking thing, and then cutting all the things and the heat gun. And it was like, I still have my Z-wires, I still use them. It's just like, I I know for a fact, I would rather have another company make them for me and I would pay them the $200. It was not worth it. You can make, you can do anything you want in this world. Just make sure it's worth it. Because when people are like spend eighty nine dollars and four hours doing something, and they charge you one hundred twenty bucks, that person's going to fail at that endeavor. It makes them feel good in their hearts, but you can't sustain yourself. You need to charge the correct amount. Charge it for what you're worth, and you're worth more than than two hundred two hundred dollars or one hundred and ninety dollars. I would. I'm so glad I quit that after like five sets I sold. Um, I actually did a video where I reviewed pads and wires. So, I mean, that's, look, how, look how few pads I have. I could write my whole fucking name out now. Probably not Zeos Pantera, but Zeos for sure with pads. I feel like I should try that. I have enough floor space. Whatever. Anyway, I just reviewed a, set, a bunch of sets of headphones and pads and went over the fact that, like, you, you really, I can't tell you what a pad will do. I pick up this pad and you say, what's this pad? It's from the GL2000s. How will this sound on a bare dynamic? And I go, I have no fucking idea. Because you could know how a pad sounds on one headphone and have know how a headphone sounds and put this pad on that headphone and you'll have, it's a fucking crapshoot every time. So that was that. Um, I'll do one more. Okay, the Burson Cable Plus. This is an expensive cable, it's like 200 bucks. I don't know, oh, Zio's expensive cables. You don't deal with expensive cables. Yeah, but this wasn't just a cable. This was a Cable Plus. So Burson came out with an RCA to RCA and an RCA to three and a half millimeter version. And it has this box. And that box has a USB micro adapter. And you plug a linear power supply into it and it then boosts the signal four decibels, I think, four and a half decibels. So if you have a very quiet source, like something come up with a phono preamp or something like that, and you want to get it to like mix your levels properly, this was the cleaner way to do that. Because it would just take the signal, reamplify it just a little bit, and give it out. And I've actually used that recently. I used one of them recently because I had something that was just too fucking quiet. I'm like, I plug it in, I turn this up, I plug this in, I, I, I'm getting too high, too, I don't want to get this high up. I wish this had more gain. Boom, it added gain. So that was, so I don't think I'll have to even sell those anymore, but they were expensive. And if I didn't get them for free, I probably wouldn't have purchased the set. Because I've used them a handful of times over the last four years. And I would have probably figured out another way to do it or just went, eh, it's good enough. But having those available was nice. Having those available was just like, okay, you know, this is a little bit quiet, the output of this. I need to be a little higher. Boom, done. So that's it, Burst and Cable Plus. We will continue um, episode 18 on the Ether Flows. And the AKGs. Okay, so that'll be next time. So we're ending on the Burst and Cable Plus. If you like these videos, please support this channel. God Almighty. I need to just drink water and water is expensive. Oh. I keep thinking I see my cat. Um, Patreon and subscribe star. I'll link in the description and the pinned comment. And you can see reviews early, not these videos, because they don't really pertain to anything, but see reviews early. And you can participate in the yard sales. 
from the first to the tenth of every month. If you want me to answer your questions, please feel free to jump into the ten dollar tier, where you can then enter the private Telegram chat, where um, I will answer your questions like pretty much all day. You just add it into the chat at Zeos Pantera, and that's available through Patreon or Subscribe Star. And then finally, if you want to get answers from multiple sources besides the Telegram chat, um, the Hi-Fi Guides forum and website are there to help with that and keep you on the straight and narrow, and hey, there you go. So yeah, our wallpaper, which this, I'm not sure if it's going to be fixed by the time this video comes out, but this girl's fine. This girl, um, some bad Matrix level fucking deinterlacing shit happened to her, and she looks like a mess. But um, she looks good from afar, so that's great. So yeah, download the wallpaper, check out the links in the below for anything that's still relevant. Like if I can link those, I will, because they are still relevant. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for a normal review. Peace.